Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem remove all adjacent duplicates in string. We're given a string s and we're also given an integer k and we want to make a k duplicate removal on the string s as many times as we can, basically until we can't do it anymore. What exactly is a k duplicate removal? Basically, k is going to be an integer, in this case it's 3, and a k duplicate removal is basically removing a portion of this string where there are three consecutive characters. So we can see that that's happening here. There's three C characters in a row. So we're going to do a removal like that. Now, are there any other parts where that's going on? Well, there's three E's in a row. So we remove all three of those as well. Are there any more three consecutive characters left? You might think there's not, but let's actually rewrite the string because as we remove characters, we're actually changing the way this string looks. And when you actually rewrite the string, you can see that there actually are three Bs in a row now. That wasn't the case originally, but as we remove some characters there and remove some characters there, then these uh, groups of characters basically combined, and now we have three B characters in a row. So now we're gonna remove those. And then after we do that, we're gonna have three D characters in a row. Since this whole is removed, that means these groups have been joined together. So three Ds in a row. So we're going to remove those as well. And then we'll be left with two A characters in a row. And at that point, of course, we won't be able to do anything else. So that is going to be our result in this example. So one thing to notice about this problem is the order that we do the removals in is not going to matter at all. Because if we have a group like this, three Bs, we don't have to remove it immediately. There could be some other characters. Maybe there's three Cs over here or some other group in the entire string. We can do this removal whenever we want because it's true that when we do a removal, we're making other groups join each other. So then we're going to introduce new groups that have three consecutive characters or whatever k happens to be. k could be more than three, it could be less than three. But as we do a removal, these groups might join together. But there's no way that this group of three Bs is ever going to be separated until we actually remove it. There's nothing we could do. We could remove any character over here or any character over there. We're never going to separate this group of Bs. And in this case, it's three Bs, but it could be a thousand Bs. So it doesn't matter what order we do the removals in. Also, an immediate solution you might think of is just first scan through the entire input, anytime we find a group of k consecutive characters, we do a removal. And then we know that the string is going to be updated to look like this now. And then we would scan through the new uh, string and then do the same removal if it's possible for us. In this case, it is. But you're going to notice that in this case, we're having to scan through the entire array, uh, which is, let's say, size n, the entire string. And then we could, in the worst case, have to do that maybe n times or something like that. That would be an n squared time complexity solution. So the question is, can we do better? And the answer is definitely yes. Let me show you how. First, how are we even going to identify this group of three consecutive characters? Let's say in our example, k is equal to three. Well, we're going to iterate through the array. We could count, okay, one c so far. Then we're going to get to an a, one a so far, two a's so far. Is there going to be a third a? Nope. We have a b now, one b, two b's, three b's. So we did count to three b's. That means that we're going to remove these three characters. And after we do this removal, we know that we're going to be joining this part of the string with this part of the string. And at this point, the naive algorithm would be to start back all the way at the beginning and then iterate through the entire string again. But the question is, is that required for us? If we just removed this, where would it possibly be that we introduced a new consecutive three characters? It's not like we're going to introduce them all the way at the beginning. We would only do that by taking this and combining it with this. So we only need to check if we introduced three consecutive characters in the middle 
And how would we do that? Well, we would take a look at our next character that we're getting. It's an A, and we would check what were the characters that came before. There are also A's. How many were there? There were two. So that means we do have three consecutive A's now. So now we would do another removal. But hold on, and then we would be left with something like this. And again, we would repeat the same thing. The next character we're looking at is a C. Here, we would say, okay, what was the character that came before? It was also a C. And then we're going to have a third C here. So now we're going to do the same removal. So as you can kind of see, we are going to have to look backwards. We're not going to be starting all the way at the beginning and then going forwards. We're actually going to be going from where we are and then looking backwards. Because as you could see, first we got a C, an A, an A, then we got three Bs, and then we removed the three Bs. And then we had an, a C, an A, an A, and then we got a third A, and then we removed the three A's. And then we are already had a single C, and then we added two more, and now we're going to remove all three of them. This is reminiscent of a stack data structure because we're always going to be removing from the most recently added characters. So the way I'm going to be setting up the stack actually is going to be taking uh, the character and then mapping it to the count of that character. We don't necessarily need to. I think we could get roughly the same time complexity just by adding each character to the stack, but it makes it a little bit easier to keep track of the count of it. <clears throat> Because then as soon as the count reaches K, we know that we have K consecutive characters and then we can immediately do that removal. So what I'm going to do is start at the first character, a C. Is this on our stack yet? Nope. So let's add it to the stack. We're adding the character C, a count of one so far. Then we're getting uh, to the second character A. Is this the character that we previously added? Nope. So we're adding a new character A. It has a count of one. We're adding a second A. So we're changing the count of A now to be two because it's the same as the previously added character. Next, we're adding a B, so that's not on our stack yet, so we're going to add a B count of one, and then of course we're going to add a second B, and then we're going to add a third B, so the count of B is going to be three. As soon as the count of a character at the top of our stack is equal to K, we can go ahead and remove that character now, removing from the middle of a string would not be super efficient, but removing from the end of a stack is much more efficient. So all we have to do is pop this from our stack. That's an O of one time operation. And pushing to a stack is also an O of one time operation. So now we're going to add A. We're going to look at the top of our stack. A is on the top of our stack. We previously added two A's, right? We're basically pretending like these B's never existed, which is correct because they pretty much don't exist anymore. So if we have one A here and two A's over there, that means we have three consecutive A's. So let's take the count of this A over here and make it three. And we know as soon as we do that, we are going to pop this because three is equal to K. And we know that that's three consecutive characters. We can remove them. So we're going to pretend like these characters never even existed. Now we're going to get to the next character. It's a C. The top of our stack is a C. So we're going to increment this to be two now. Sorry if my handwriting is a little bit messy, but that's a two. Next, we're going to add the last character, which is a C. So now we're going to have three C's and so once we reach that magic number, we know we're also going to pop now. So we're going to pretend like these characters never existed because these three C's are consecutive, right? Because these are deleted. So we have three consecutive C's. We pop that. And then basically the result is that we're left with an empty string because our stack is empty now. And then we would return this as the output. But it might be possible that suppose we didn't actually have this third C character then we would have had two C characters, right? This is what our stack would have ended at, two Cs. And then we would take this stack and then convert it back into a string. And that string would be just two Cs, right? Because after doing all these deletions, we're left with CC. And then that's what we would return. So you can see that in the worst case, we're adding every single character to the stack and removing every single character from the stack. So that would be an O of N time operation to add every character plus big O of N to remove every character. So the overall time complexity is 2N, which is still linear time complexity. The space complexity is also big O of N because we're using the stack as extra space. So now let's code 
code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. You can see I have a stack. In this case, I'm using an array and it's gonna be a pair of values, the character and the count. If you're doing this in other languages, you could use two uh, stacks, two arrays, one to keep track of the character, one to keep track of the count. But in Python, we can add pairs of values and I think it's easier to do that. So then we're just gonna iterate through every single character in the string from left to right, because remember, it doesn't really matter what order we go in. We're going to check if our stack is non-empty and if uh, the character that we're right now we're at, well, the top of the stack first, right? We're looking at the top of the stack. We can do that with the negative one index in Python. And we're looking at the first of the pair. We're looking at the character. So we're gonna take zero. Is that equal to the current character that we're at? If it is, then we know we can actually increment the count of that character by one. One is the second value of the pair, which is the count. So we're gonna take that and increment it by one. If it's not the case, either our stack is empty or this is not the same character at the top of our stack, then we're going to append to our stack uh, this character uh, and we're gonna give it an initial count of one. That means we have one consecutive of this character. Now it's possible that the count of that character just reached K. We can tell that by checking, okay, the top of our stack and the count of it, is it equal to K? If it is, then we pop that from our stack. Now, the other cases are that it's less than K. If it's less than K, we don't do anything. You might be thinking, what if it's, what if the count of it is greater than K? Then wouldn't we want to decrement K from it? My answer to that is it's never going to be greater than K because we're only incrementing the count by one every single time or just initially setting it to one. So if it ever reaches K, then we're immediately going to pop it. It's never going to be larger than K. We're not gonna let that happen. So after that's said and done, we removed all uh, duplicate K characters. And then we're going to actually take our stack and then convert it to the result string. So the easiest way to do that is just to iterate through our stack. We're gonna iterate through the pair of characters, the character and the count. We're going to iterate through the pair of values on the stack, the character and the count. We're going to append to the result this character, and then we want to make this many copies of that character. In Python, it's actually pretty easy. You can take the character and then multiply it by a number, and that'll basically take, you know, if this was A and this was 3, it'll create three consecutive A's. You could also use like a nested for loop if you wanted to. But now that we've built our result string, we can go ahead and return it, and now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, Yes, it does, and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. If you're preparing for coding interviews, consider checking out neatcode.io. It's a free resource that I created, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.